So how do you find equivalent fractions for fractions that don't work nicely with each other? So how do we do this? Well, let's take a look at three over six, and we want to turn it into something out of 10. Now, most of us know that three out of six is half, and half of 10 would be five. So we're looking for the answer five. But if you're to try to find an equivalent um, fraction for it, it could be difficult because the number you'd have to times six by would be some weird decimal number, and that would be confusing. So I'm gonna put a little sad face here because that would make me sad if I had to figure out what the equivalent fraction is. So we know it's five, but there's gotta be an easier way to find this five. How do we do this? So we're gonna try something called cross multiplying. Now, this is something that math gurus do not like me to teach you. Why is this? Because it doesn't explain exactly how the fractions work or why it works. It's kind of just a trick. However, it's a really good trick. So let me show you how to cross multiply. I've got my three over six, and I want it to equal something out of 10. Well, this is what you do when you cross multiply. The first thing you do is you find the opposite diagonal and you multiply those. So the first step, I'm going to find the three on the top and the 10 down the bottom. It has to be on a diagonal. So in this case, I'm going to go three times 10. Okay, and what would that give me? Anyone, anyone want to be 30, yeah. So that gives me 30, thank you. So that gives me 30. Except we know 30 is not the right answer. We know five is the answer. So what do we have to do next? Well, there's a second part. It's cross multiply and then you divide with the last number. So we're gonna actually use the number six here to divide our 30. So then we go 30 divided by six equals, and what's 30 divided by six? Or what's six times blank equals 30? It is five, yeah, because if you go 30 divided by six, the answer will be five. And so our fraction is five out of 10. And the nice thing about this is it works for any equivalent fractions that we want to find missing values for. So let's look at percentages. Let's look, we, we all know that one half is what percentage? What's one half if we were to do a percentage? That's yeah, 50%, okay? So how, let's do some cross multiplying dividing. Let's cross multiply. So let's do I'm crossing this way, my little arrow. One times 10 or one times 100 is 100. And then we divide, divide the 100 by two. And what's our answer? Oh, it works. So we got the right answer. Yay. So this would be 50 up here. So our answer would be 50 out of 100. So this works really, really well. Now, if it's a fraction that we can find something to make it equivalent easy, like you know, into 100 from a half, you can do it that way. But if it's something that's a little bit trickier, so for example, let's say a fraction, let's do like one third, and we wanna figure out what one third is for uh, something out of 120. Because when you use big numbers or numbers with decimals, this is where it becomes super helpful. So let's do this one together. We're gonna to go one times 120, because we're crossing. That gives us 120. And then we divide with the last number that's remaining. So 120 divided by three, equals 40. Yay! So we have our 40 out of 120. And that makes sense. It's 40 out of 120. The cross multiplying dividing is a really good strategy to help you find that missing number when you're looking at equivalent fractions. And so it's great for finding percents. It's great for uh, 
the sciences, when you start doing chemistry and physics, it really is a useful strategy to quickly do it. And the nice thing is you can do it really easily on a calculator. So you will find that it's much easier sometimes um, than using just pictures or using fraction strips uh, or trying to find that number that divides into the or multiplies into the top and bottom part of the equivalent fraction it'll be much easier sometimes just to use an equivalent fraction and that's our video